What's up, kiddos? I hope you're having a good day. We're going to get down with another lesson about the ocean. But first, I better get up a little bit so you can see how cool this shirt is. The shark side of the moon? I mean, come on. That's awesome. Today, we're going to be talking about this little critter right here. Corals. And most specifically, we're going to be talking about what coral bleaching is. Okay, kids? So right now... um. Right, right now there is there is the largest widespread bleaching event happening on the Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest coral reef system on Earth. The second largest is in Belize, and the third largest is actually in Florida. It goes from Fort Lauderdale all the way past Key West to the Dry Tortugas. That's called the Atlantic Barrier Reef. Now, a problem that we're having is what's called coral bleaching. Okay. Now, when we say that, it's kind of like because when bleach gets on this shirt, for example, it'll, it'll stain out the color, it'll bleach out the color, meaning it'll turn white. So when we scientists are talking about coral bleaching, we're talking about the corals underwater turning white um, when they shouldn't. You know, people don't realize that all color from all coral come from an algae called zooxanthellae. So imagine this. A lot of times people are asking me, say, hey, Captain Planet, you know, what is a coral? Is it a plant? Is it a rock? Is it an animal? What is it? You know what my answer always is? Yeah. <laughs> because it really is. It's like all three of them at the same time. But first and foremost, it is actually an animal. Okay, so this, this rock-looking animal um, its closest relative is actually the jellyfish. Now, this is obviously a dead piece of coral that's washed up on the beach. You guys can get a better look. All those little holes are what we call polyps. Now, we scientists always thought that these individual polyps were also like individual creatures. Like, imagine in your school, um, every one of you kids has a mouth. Every one of you kids um, has a stomach and all this stuff. So that's how we thought of corals. Because every single one of these holes has its own mouth, its own stomach, its own stinging tentacles that come out and attack. Um, so we thought every single one of these was its own individual. But come to find out, it's actually not. And it's actually more like the movie Avatar. And, and, and it's like one unit. So imagine... Thinking in your classroom, if all of you 25 kids in a classroom is what made up the organism and that you're not, in fact, separate organisms. I mean, isn't that wild? So a long time ago, this jellyfish relative, the coral, decided to make a deal with algae that would change the course of its life forever as well as planet Earth. And the coral looks over at the algae, Zosenthal, and he's like, hey, dude. Let me pass something by you, man. If I build this hard calcium carbonate hotel um, that would keep you safe, would you want to move in and like pay the rent and maybe paint the house for me? You know, and and the algae's like, well, yeah. I mean, I'm always living in things like the Cassiopeia jellyfish getting eaten by sea turtles. I'd love to live in a calcium carbonate hotel. So calcium carbonate is what makes this look like a rock, okay? So calcium carbonate is also the same thing as limestone. Now, that's what corals use to make its, its hard skeleton structure. That's also what gastropods use to make their snails, is this calcium carbonate. So what happened was they, they, there's a symbiotic relationship, guys. The algae moves inside of this calcium carbonate hotel, and he pays the rent, and he paints the crib, yo. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that the algae zooxanthellae actually creates 90 to 98 percent of the energy that this rocky-looking animal needs to survive, simply by soaking up the sunshine out on that reef. Now, that's like paying rent, you know, to your landlord, right? Because like you're you're paying most of what's owed, right? You know, um, that other 
10 to 2%. You could think of that like the taxes. <laughs> and they also paint the crib, meaning every color that we see in every single coral comes from the algae zooxanthellae. You know, so why does it feel like I'm getting off topic talking about this when I said that it's about coral bleaching, this video? Well, it's because we need to understand why the coral even has color before we can begin to understand what's happening when the coral is losing its color. You know, to a normal, average, everyday person, who cares if a, if a, a rocky-looking animal is turning white instead of yellow or, or green or purple or this or that? You know, there's a lot to it, guys. This is why it's a big deal. Because that color is giving 90 to 98% of that energy that the coral needs to survive. Otherwise, it's going to die in about three to four months is the longest it can really last. Usually just a couple months. Now, why is coral bleaching happening all over planet Earth? You know, over half of our reef is dead here in Florida, guys. It's a coral bleaching. So, this critter right here has been around planet Earth for over 550 million years, guys. So, if it's been around that long, it was here way before the dinosaurs. You know, it was here, you know, through several climate changes. So, why is it dying during this climate change? You know, that's been the main question. Well... As a scientist, I'll tell you it's because we humans are adding extra pressure on that already naturally warming uh, planet, and we're making it too hot too fast, and it just can't keep up. So see, it's the algae's job to supply the energy that the coral needs, but if the algae is getting too hot too fast, then it creates the same problem as it does with me and you. You know when I'm out working the farm, for example, and I get too hot too fast? What happens? I don't work as hard, right? You know, even bosses know this. That's why they give their employees breaks and lunch breaks. And, you know, it's because they know if they don't catch a break, you know, it you're going to suffer on the workload. So the algae in this coral, kids, is getting so hot so fast that it goes from producing 90 to 98% of the energy that that coral animal needs to survive to, let's say, only producing 50% of the energy that this coral animal needs to survive. Well, what happens is the coral reacts no differently than your and I bodies do. You know, when the coral reacts as if it's a disease, a sickness, okay? What happens to you and me when we get a sickness? We get a fever, and it makes makes us sweat out of every hole in our body, all these pores. We'll even make stuff come out of bigger holes, like we might even throw up. You know, um, we'll do all these different things to get the sickness out of us when our body thinks it's sick. Now think about it. It's not our brain telling our bodies, hey, you need to go ahead and produce a fever because I think we're getting sick. No, it just happens, right? Because it's a reaction. You know, we don't really control that. Sure, the brain has something to play, but there's no brain in this coral. So think about this, kids. It's getting so hot, so fast, that it's losing its productivity. And then the corals think that they have a sickness. So through every single hole on here, the coral starts to spit out what's inside of it. Just like how we sweat out a fever. But the problem is, is it's getting rid of that algae, you know, and it's done this in the past. And the reason why it wants to get rid of that algae inside is because it can lower the likelihood of disease because it basically can go into like, think of it like a dormant state. But in the past, after a few weeks, maybe a month, the algae comes back inside, takes its place. But this zooxanthellae, it's like a a good old farmer kid from Kansas, you know? He doesn't shake a hand and make a deal unless he knows he can keep the deal. And the coral's expecting this 90 to 98% energy trade-off. But the algae, knowing it can't pull it off, it's like he's almost just choosing not to go back inside of the coral. You know, so think about this, kids. Over half 
of coral reefs on planet Earth have already died just within, within the last few years. And it's projected that by 2050, coral reefs will become extinct. 25% of the ocean depends on coral reefs. Coral reefs also hold a third of Earth's carbon, that C word. You know, so even though some people might look at this and only see a rock, I see a lot more than a rock. I see a story that needs to be told. You know, because people need to understand why when we talk about coral bleaching, it's such a big deal. You know, right now, we're witnessing the most widespread coral bleaching that planet Earth has ever seen. It's been able to survive 550 million years. But it's just not able to survive mankind. Not unless we let it, kids. So remember, when it's your turn to make the rules, when it's your turn to vote, remember the homies. Remember the corals, okay? Literally, kids, save the corals, and you save yourselves. Save the reef, and you keep that idea of, of peace alive. Because you save the reef, you save the food. Save the food, you keep the peace. We all know that hungry people get angry. We know that hunger leads to war. And if we let our coral reefs become extinct, then how can we eat tuna if tuna doesn't have breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It won't be, if we lose 25% of the ocean, if we lose coral reefs, it won't be 75% of a circle. It'll be a broken circle, guys. The ocean is what controls Earth's temperature and its weather, and it's 70% of its oxygen. All these important things, not the rainforest. So remember, even though the rainforest needs a voice, our coral reefs need voices too, kids. Remember, do it for the coral, coral homies. They're the best. They've been around so long. And I'd really hate to lose 550 million years of coral evolution because we couldn't figure out how to share. You kids know how to share. It's the adults that forgot how. So do cap a favor. Remind them how to share. Love you guys. Peace.